<laughs> so, uh, welcome to ReaperCon, by the way, this is the first tour of the show. So. Uh, this is our Masters Mold Making Department. We actually have Kevin back here behind you, hard at work. Unfortunately, poor Kevin has to work during uh, ReaperCon. We have a contract coming up, and uh, we've got to get the molds ready. We've got to begin on it as soon as the show is over. So we don't have to, can't afford the time to stop. Right. So anyway, in our mold making department, we get the greens from the original sculptors. And I'll step, I'll back up just a moment. The greens are cast in a two-part epoxy resin. One part is yellow, one part is blue. When they are thoroughly mixed, they become green. We call the stuff that we use, that, that two-part resin, we call it green stuff. And we call the sculpts that come as a result of it greens. You can tell we're a very creative bunch. <laughs> um, you guys can pass this around. This is an actual green. It's already been pressed. Um, try not to drop it because it will yeah, break. Be bad. Um, but it does give you an opportunity to see the level of detail that they sculpt these in. Which, if you're familiar with the figures, you know the level of detail. But. So the greens come in from the sculptors, and we take these. These are called mold boxes. Did you watch Oh. And they're extremely heavy. Do not drop these on your toes. This is the light one. So we take these mold boxes, we'll lay down layers of uh, rubber and take the green, put that inside it. Now we may have to build up additional pockets of rubber to help support like that axis on a different plane of the body on that particular green. So we lay it down like this and we put a build up of rubber underneath the axe. And then uh, we put more rubber on top of it, plop the lid on it, seal these shut. Obviously I don't want to do that right now. Um, and then we put it inside the vulcanizer here. We squeeze them, uh, 1,200 pounds of pressure, 350 degrees, cook it for about an hour. For the first 30 minutes, the rubber will get really, really soft, liquid, and will flow into all the tiny cracks. Don't to Brian. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Thank you. That was Matt Clark. He's been my boss for seven years now. So he's probably listening. Anyway, so the, where was I? The rubber gets really liquid, flows into all the little cracks and crevices, picks up the detail. Uh, as fine detail as they are able to sculpt into it, the rubber is able to get into that crevice. Uh, if a sculptor is uh, not careful and is pressing the green stuff with their hands and leaves a thumbprint or a partial thumbprint in the green, that thumbprint will be replicated on our figure. I mean, it'll, it'll pick up that, that level. Um, during the process of this melting, the rubber will begin to vulcanize, it will harden, it will become as solid and firm as car tire rubber. This is an example, I believe these are some of the Sophie wings for this year's ReaperCon Biker Sophie. So it's like car tire rubber at this point, really hard, really firm, I can bend it, twist it. Not a lot of damage I can do to it with my bare hands. If I had a knife or, or uh, tire iron or some such, I could probably destroy it. Um, so we cut in the funnel shape here for the metal to be poured in in the casting room, which will be the next room you see. And then we cut out all these little channels and air vents for the metal to flow and for the air to come out of the pocket and things like that. Uh, a given mold, we try to have 12 copies of everything on it so that each time we produce it, we're not just producing one, we're making about a dozen or so. That looks a lot more efficient. Why do you have the newspaper? Uh, the newspaper keeps the mold from creating a vacuum. Inside spin, inside casting, we're going to put it inside a spin caster, and you guys won't be able to get super close because I'm working with 700 degree metal back there, and, and I don't want any of you good to have to be taken to the hospital. Um, you're welcome. <laughs> uh, but we put it in the spin caster, and we put a metal steel plate on top of it, and there's a hydraulic press in it. It squeezes the two halves together to prevent the metal from flowing out where it's not supposed to. Um, if we didn't have the paper, it might create a vacuum, and then we wouldn't be able to lift that steel plate back off. So we put that on there. Um, these, these channels on the bottom do the same function as the newspaper on the top. All right. So this is our casting department. We use talc as a release agent. Rubber is really good at stopping things from moving. Um, I don't know the, uh, the physics term for it. It has a lot of friction, drag, something like that. Anyway, um, you put it on the bottom of your shoes to keep you from continuing to slip as you walk. 
so when the metal hits the rubber, it actually wants to stop. The, the metal wants to stop, and then what's liquid will continue to try and move, but sometimes that causes some really weird shapes to form in the metal. So we use talc as a release agent. Uh, it basically acts like marbles on a tile floor. So the metal hits the talc and skids across, allowing it to get all the way into all the little nooks and crannies. So I drop this mold down here in the middle, and I'm going to lock this plate down. We're running about 22 pounds of pressure. Uh, I've got about 45 RPMs right now. When I lock this in, the hydraulics are going to come up. They squeeze the two halves together, and now it's going to begin spinning. My metal, this is our pewter mix, this is our primary dark heaven or longer from scope, all that. Not our, our P65 metals. Uh, right now, it looks to be, so we get count on everything back here. It's about 725 degrees right now. Which is a little warm, but that's okay. At that temperature, the metal flows like rubber. It pours like, it flows like rubber. It flows like water. It pours like water. It splashes like water if you're not careful. Tastes like water? But it's a lot easier to clean up that water. Yeah. <laughs> Pour that right in there. We'll give it about 10 to 15 seconds, and that'll be enough time for that to cool off. I'll be able to pick that out. I'm go ahead and powder those. I clap these together to knock off all of the excess powder. The talc will burn. A small layer of talc won't, but if there's a large clump of talc that got spit somewhere on that That'll burn, you'll get a brown spot. Uh, may or may not texture the mold, but it's just not pretty in the package. Set this on this rack to cool. Right now, the metal is still a little over 450 degrees. You can tell because I can still manipulate it with my fingers. Uh, so this is going to be very hot when it comes that way. Please be careful. I'll remove the excess there so that it doesn't splash. During a normal day's production, I have three casters going on, uh, on our lines. We work 10-hour workdays. We get Friday, 10-hour workday. Our casters produce 15 pounds of metal per hour. The average figure is 16 pieces to an ounce. No, to a pound, sorry. One ounce per figure is the average. Uh, so it's something approaching 2,500 pieces per hour with three lines going on a 10-hour day. So 7,500 pieces, 75,000, is that correct, per day? Yeah. Yeah, 75,000 miniatures per day that we produce. Mm -hmm. 